In this video, we're going to talk about writing electron configurations and how that links to the periodic chart. So when it comes to electron configurations, you may recall that we have a pattern. And as we increase in energy, we have different orbital possibilities as you increase the energy level you're at. So electrons have a certain amount of energy. We only find them in certain spots. So on the first energy level, there's only an s orbital that can hold two electrons. As you move up to the second, we now add a layer of p orbitals that we say are degenerate because they all have the same amount of energy, but there are three different possibilities. Each can hold up to two electrons. And then when we get to the d, we have five different degenerate, degenerate orbitals. So that means there's room for 10 electrons. And with the f's, we have 14 because there's seven different orbitals spots for 14 electrons. And as we go up, you notice that we start by filling the first energy level, and then once it's full, the next layer of electrons goes into the second energy level, the S, then the P. And then if we still have more electrons, the next ones, there's no room for them down here. Every electron would like to be as close as it can be to the nucleus and be in its lowest possible energy state, but it doesn't want to be near any other electrons because likes repel likes. So as we go up, we continue up. And by the way, this is called the Aufbau principle. Aufbau is German for building up. And so as we go up, we continue to fill until we run out of electrons. And so in this case, you notice the 3D orbitals. One of them is partially filled. So there are six electrons in this 3D orbital for this element. Uh, you always spread them out first. If there are five different possible states that are of equal energy, one electron will go into each one of them before any one of them has to be paired with one of an opposite spin. And that's the only reason they put up with each other is that their magnetic fields are opposite because their spin are in opposite directions. When we look at this arrangement of electrons, for every atom we can make this pattern and we can write it out. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and so on and so on and so on. Remember that what determines the reactivity of an element is its arrangement in its outermost energy layer, what we call its valence shell or the valence electrons. And so when we look at the periodic chart, for example, the first two, if we go across the periods, the periods actually correspond to the primary energy levels, one through seven. And the first two columns correspond to elements whose valence shell is, it has an s orbital. So it's the s orbital electrons that are determining or be, the behavior. So everything in the first column ends in an s1. And everything below that is full. So for hydrogen, there's only one electron. 1s1 is one arrow. And when we go to helium, well, that fills the 1s orbital, which means the first energy shell is full. If we have three electrons, because we're talking about lithium, well, the first ones are full. And then now we have one electron in the 2s. And if it was sodium, everything would be full. Up to the 3s would have one electron, and so on and so forth. So we refer to these two columns as the S block because the last electrons, the valent shell electrons, are S orbital electrons on the energy level that actually corresponds to the period on the chart. If we come over to the other side, because notice we have the little gap here, because on the second energy level is where we only get Ps in addition to the Ss. We add the Ps, and there are six possibilities three different p orbitals each can hold two electrons and so everything in, uh, in boron and underneath would end in an s2p1 and carbon would be s2p2 and so on until you get to the noble gases the inert gases where the entire s and p orbitals are full now notice in the energy diagram that you go to the 4s and the 4s gets filled before the 3d. The three unfilled 3d orbitals or d orbitals in general have more potential energy than the uh, 
s orbital that belongs to the next higher energy level until it gets full. Once it gets full of electrons, the energy state of these electrons is no different than the ones in the p and the ones in the s, and they kind of all blend together, if you will, uh, in terms of their potential energy. But until it's full, it actually, even partially full, has more potential energy. And so the D block is the section in the middle here. And these elements correspond to D orbital electrons, but they're one energy level behind the period they're in. So notice here, I get 4s1, 4s2 for calcium. And then scandium is 4s2, 3d1. This picture over here is of an element with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 d orbital electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 d orbital electrons. This is the electron configuration over here, or the map of the electrons for iron. Okay, element number 26. There are 26 arrows here, 26 electrons to correspond with the 26 protons that are in the nucleus of iron. So if you can find where an element is on the chart, you can figure out every part of its electron configuration because you know where to stop. Hopefully this helps you kind of coordinate and even shortcut once you're looking at the periodic table to figure out what the electron configuration of any element in the chart is based on its location.